So crafting your own weapons in Starfield can be a complete game changer. And today we're going to take a look at some of the best ways to truly enhance your damage and not just that to the next level. If you haven't paid any attention, mods are absolutely insane and they don't just turn almost any gun into a complete powerhouse, but they can also provide completely new functionalities and effects to take down enemies in a whole bunch of interesting ways. So today I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step guide on how I like to mod my weapons, as well as some of the best mods that I recommend always going with. But all of this begins from the science skill tree, which I would say is one of the best in the entire game, and specifically because of these three abilities, including research methods, space to design, and weapons engineering. So all of these kind of go hand in hand in reducing the costs associated with crafting mods, for your weapons and gear and even providing you higher grade mods that you otherwise cannot get access to so if you like having a suppressor on that comes in at rank 2 if you want some of the muzzles that provide additional explosives or shock damage or anything else in between these come at the later stages and you will have to rank these skills up for that to happen but luckily enough when you level one of these skills Usually, it also counts for the research methods because they kind of share the same challenge track. So when you craft the mod, it counts for two of these at the same time. But another cool mechanic that comes with the research projects is the overflow mechanic or the sudden development, which is kind of like a cool way that the game lets you skip some of the math requirements to finish these research projects much faster. So just to give you an example, in this case, I only had enough mats for the first couple of inputs so the first and the third one and then i went in and added some of the lubricant i still had and in this case the game triggered that sudden development which automatically filled the second and the fourth rows which previously i did not have enough mats for this is of course all random including the amounts that you get from the overflow mechanic but you can also have a really good chance for example to just slot in one resource and then have the overflow fill pretty much the entire project as it is. I've seen that happen quite a few times. And by the way, the chance for this to trigger is going to be doubled once you reach research methods rank 4, which should come up in no time. From this point on, you will want to push that weapons engineering to rank 4 as fast as possible. So this is going to be a combination between pushing higher level research projects and when you reach the cap, then you're going to want to craft enough mods so that you can unlock the next rank in the weapons engineering, which is going to unlock the next batch of research projects. Complete those again, rinse and repeat until you reach rank 4. So that's going to be about 40 or so mods that you need to craft. But again, it should take no time with the number of weapons you'll get anyway. And by the way, again, make use of the Jemison Mercantile Shop back at the New Atlantis. This is going to sell you all the resources needed and you can just use the 48 hour cooldown timer to reset the entire stash and buy everything that you need for that. Plus, if you track these items, it's going to be much easier for you to spot them at the vendor list. But once you do that and reach high enough levels, these are some of my favorite mods when it comes to weapons. And then we're going to talk about the ones for the armors. So for the weapons, the earliest and one of the best mods in the entire game is going to be the suppressor. You find this in the muzzle category as soon as you reach rank 2 with the weapons engineering. And this can double, triple, even quadruple or more your weapon damage, especially if you couple this with the stealth and the concealment skills in the physical skill line. And that is because you're going to get the massive bonuses from the stealth modifiers. And even if you don't go with that specific route, you're still going to get a double damage modifier from the suppressor and the stealth mechanic. And this works very well with a sniper. So if you can get a rifle, put a long barrel on it, then place a suppressor, you can just take down targets from very far away and still technically be considered hidden so that you can just aim for those double damage crits or even higher if you go for the headshots and whatnot. Another one that I found extremely devastating is from the magazines and batteries mod 3 and it's called the Hornet's Nest. So this is an upgrade for some of these explosive shotguns. The way this works is that this adds extra explosions beneath the initial explosion you get by default. So to better visualize that, if I were to shoot at the ceiling, you will spot a number of extra explosions that will shoot downwards and also cover the area below. So what this means is if you pick enemies off in a chokehold point like this, you can basically cover a whole bunch of area. That means you're going to guarantee hit everything. 
but even in normal gameplay the additional number of explosions can mean a ton more damage even though technically speaking the per explosion damage is about 10 percent weaker than the default variant but because of the higher number of damage sources you're looking at pretty much annihilating almost any type of enemy especially if they aren't of the boss type there's also a third one from the same research project called Tesla Pylons. This can be available even on shotguns, I've even seen it on pistols, I believe even rifles, but its description says that it leaves behind a bunch of pylons that will cause the surface to be electrified and basically kind of arch electricity between two points. In reality, the way this works is that you shoot at anything and it spawns this arc of electricity that just zaps everything in its vicinity. And this is extremely useful if you want to like just crowd control enemies it doesn't just deal damage over time against them but it can also severely slow them down and can even force them into odd positions like if they are behind the corner you can just flash them out with this or like just deal damage from behind the corner when you don't have a clear shot i would say that this is an extremely good upgrade to have it just gives you that extra utility on top and the extra damage without losing any bit of damage on yeah the base damage that you already deal with these as a matter of fact you actually deal more damage because as you can see i'm gaining a bit over there in the green just slightly but uh, it's still going to be useful from the damage over time now besides these we also have some very powerful utility mods and some of them can even let us see targets through walls so there are two methods in which you can see targets through walls one includes lasers and the other one includes scopes and both of these are acquired through rank 3 lasers and scopes mod upgrade or well research project but if you go with the laser variant this is going to be the recon laser sight and basically as you aim at the target for one or two seconds tops this is then going to reveal that target for about five to ten seconds so that you can now see its positioning even behind walls which is very good if you're kind of sitting behind walls maybe low hp or on the very hard difficulty and want a constant update where that target is this is going to help you a ton with that or if you're just sniping enemies from afar it helps quite a bit with that but there's also a scope variant that does pretty much the exact same thing so in this case i recommend to either go with one or the other but don't stack them as obviously that would be a waste at least not unless you get a significant bump in accuracy as it is that would be the only case in which i recommend it now we talked about those explosive shotgun shells there is also a rifle variant for that if you want to have a similar effect but on the rifle so in this case we have the explosive rounds however these are significantly weaker from my findings compared to the ones coming from the shotguns Reason being is mainly because the explosions are on a much, much smaller scale compared to the ones from the shotgun shells, which in this case means they deal significantly less damage even with a higher fire rate. This is especially true if you fight high armored enemies, which most of the higher end game ones will always be. So if you want to fight against those, this is not going to be your best option. You should go with the armor penetrating rounds instead if you go with the rifles. Because this is going to completely bypass even the sturdiest armors so that you can directly deal damage to them and not worry too much about it. Another one that I found quite interesting is the shock charge bank. And what this does is that it electrifies all of the bullets that you shoot out of the weapon that has this. So it could be a pistol but it also works on some of these very high RPM weapons. So this is actually pretty good because it doesn't seem to follow the same restrictions as the explosive rounds so even if you fight high grade enemies with a ton of armor they will still get some extra damage on top and if you go with something like the revenant which has an insane rpm you can basically shred them completely which yeah i mean it's just insane this weapon was already great having even more damage on top for every bullet makes it that much better and you will again mow down through enemies like they are nothing Everything else from this point on in the weapon category is basically just improving your weapon damage, accuracy, and then maybe range or magazine size in that specific order, at least that's what I'm aiming with. In this case, damage is the most important, you want to take down enemies fast, accuracy because you don't want to miss too much and want to track those bullets perfectly at the target, 
and from that point on range or magazine size depending on your choice you will have a lot of mods available for that in all the other categories but like i said armors also come with their own mod slots multiple actually for each gear piece especially at legendary quality you have four for each gear piece so there are a few mods in here that can be really good the extra capacity can be somewhat useful however it's only like 10 to 20 kilograms extra for the two extra mods you can place on the backpack and on the spaces itself now is that worth it in the end game probably not but if you want to carry a bit more it can be however the damage reduction ones are probably going to be your best bet especially against physical reduction you can totally go with that since most of the damage sources will be physical either from bullets or enemies attacking you with their bare fists or with weapons we also have some healing related mods like ones that increase the amount of healing you get from items one that provides a regeneration over time and another one that provides an emergency aid so i went with the emergency aid the way this works is that when you drop below 25 percent hp it automatically kicks in and brings you another 25 percent hp so you can boost back up to like 50 percent in no time and the cooldown on this is not that big either so it can trigger quite often that is why i chose this one now for the backpack you also have the option between different types of boost packs it's in this case either more balanced variants but also others that consume more fuel but give you more height or consume less fuel give you less height but you can use them a lot more often so in this case i'm just going to compare the balance the power and the skip capacity since they are the most different from one another so in the case of the balance this just like what the name implies kind of gives you the best of both worlds you go relatively high enough so that you can position yourself almost anywhere and you have enough jump boosts in the end game before you have to wait and regenerate the fuel again skip capacity on the other hand is going to not give you that much jump height but you can use it a lot more often and it regenerates its fuel a lot faster so this is very good if you want to reposition quickly very often just keep enemies confused and just like gain a ton of momentum very fast it can be a great option for that the other one is the power pack and this is the complete opposite of the previous one as in it lets you reach much much greater heights than any other variant but at the cost of much more fuel consumption so you will literally consume almost an entire bar but can basically jump over an entire building or an entire ship so this can be extremely useful on very low gravity planets for example if you want to like reach into the stratosphere or if you're fighting enemies and want to quickly reach the rooftops where they might be positioned this can help you a ton with that in case you don't want multiple boosts and like just waste energy to reach the upstairs but that is pretty much it when it comes to the best mods and the best practices let me know down below if there's anything that i missed or if you know of any other powerful mods that i didn't cover in the meantime thanks so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video